Entaratas Dar, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyle Aris, and today, uh, my second day back, I think we're going to be looking at something quite interesting. Um, my, many of you may know about the seven t or roach rush or five roach rush, whatever it may be called, but this is a variation on that tactic, and I'm wanting to look at it from the Protoss perspective, and we're going to be looking at two replays quickly today, um, looking at really what is going on with this strategy. Now this is Liquid Travis, he's a 3.2k uh, Masters player and this is WZP who is some dude who likes to play against Protoss obviously. So Liquid Travis here, not not unfamiliar to those frequenting Team Liquid as he is one of I believe the moderators there and um, he's throwing down that pylon in the normal position so nothing too strange going on right now but what we're going to be looking at in these in this series of replays is this replay um, on what probably is what not to do against this strategy and also recognizing w how to know when this strategy is coming and then we're going to look at a second replay uh, looking at how to you know play pretty well against this strategy so uh, thankfully in both replays the players have spawned in the same position so that gives a nice way to have a look at this strategy effectively and so as you can see we do have WZP here throwing down this spawning pool at 13 then going straight for the gas and from here on in um, you don't see that many more drones from WZP um, what we're looking at in, in these videos is a three roach and speedling rush and it's pretty much an all-in considering the fact that it does leave the uh, Zerg economy pretty damn broken especially in comparison to the Protoss economy as we do by the end of this game we should see a big flood of probes here uh, and the, the as you can see this uh, gateway going down in a pretty typical place as is this cybernetics core so that spawning pool has gone down and we do uh, we do have now this roach warren going down as well as a queen on the way from the WZP and fr at this point um, Liquid Travis even though he'd actually played this person two times before and he'd done it exactly the same thing um, Travis doesn't scout this roach warren nor did he actually scout the pool um, because he pretty much he said in his post that he knew what was coming so uh, even when you know what was coming, even if you know what's coming, this is still a really, really hard uh, build to actually counter. So throwing pylons down now across this uh, area. Uh, but the the real key to actually spotting this strategy is scouting this early, this early roach warren. And uh, if you can keep your probe alive in here for as long as possible, then just kind of looking at what is going on. We do have speed going down now, and warp gates being researched by Liquid Travis. Um, and this this is also a slight hitch in the plan. Uh, if you do see this occurring, uh, this this early roach warren, uh, and you're you're assuming some kind of one base all in play from a, a, a zerg, uh, then you actually really don't need that warp gate as quickly as you may think. Um, but let's go back to the action as you, from what we can see now there are three roaches on the way up there as well as these two zerglings that were doing some scouting and trying to push away those ro uh, probes but uh, Liquid Travis here is sorry I'm, I've just scratched the microphone a bit Liquid Travis here does have these uh, this sentry here and a little bit of lag there sorry but this sentry doesn't do a whole lot at this point. Uh, these roaches can see up this uh, with the aid of this overlord. And they are going to block them off in order to be able to get out. So Liquid Travis here is going for kind of like a three kind of uh, um, sentry build in order to try and keep this out. Uh, uh, but as you can see, the, it doesn't come that quickly. Uh, he has thrown down a few more gateways in order to try and uh, defend from this, but he just doesn't have enough um, to def deal with this. And this is a huge amount of units. And as you can so we're five minutes, five minutes, six minutes into this game, and these these forces are just demolishing the Protoss right now. And this can be a really, really scary um, point in the game. Uh, so. And I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that no standard build can counter this at all. Uh, they do have a little bit of banter here, but I'm just going to skip out on this. He asks how to stop it, and he suggests some cannons. And uh, we're going to look at a very. We're going to look at a, an example of those that kind of cannon defense to this. But um, my problem with this is even if you do actually scout the Roach Warren in time or whatever, and then. You throw down 
um, the forge and then throw down some cannons. The Zerg player could potentially just switch into an economical build and you could be sat on your ass for ages waiting for this attack to finally come and it never come, putting you in a really bad spot economy-wise. So here we are with the second replay. We do have SWBK Slav, Salve and Suppy here demonstrating very kindly. Um, although, that being said, they don't have a clue they're demonstrating because I just nicked the replay off the thread and it did demonstrate very well um, the potential of the kind of defense that you can get against this kind of build and uh, Suppy I think will be placing buildings in a very similar to fashion to the way that WZP did um, and I've just realized that I made tons and tons of notes for this video and uh, my girlfriend has written a shopping list on those notes and taken them to the shops so that wasn't very useful thanks thanks for that Henrietta it's fantastic um, so I'd say we're going to be looking at Salve here putting up a pretty good defense against this now I have heard quite a few suggestions uh, as to the defense against this and it seems predominantly um, all wall in based uh, apart from this one actually um, until the very last second Salve doesn't actually wall in but um, I have heard of uh, just walling in with two barracks of cybernetics core and getting stalkers out really quickly, uh, taking out the roaches that do come close with the stalkers and then just picking off as many of the zerglings as possible. But uh, what we're going to see Salve here do, as I said before, is the uh, cannon strategy. And I believe that the cannon strategy is a really big investment and I'm, I'm still, I'm sort of undecided on whether or not the legitimacy of it uh, can work, especially if the Zerg does end up throwing down that Roach Warren uh, as a kind of a dummy and then just goes into an economical build because you've ended up spending like 450 to 600 uh, minerals just on static defense at a ramp that later on in the game may become just kind of superfluous and not even that that required. So we do have the gas going down and um, that warp gate is going is warping in right now. Uh, Salve has scouted what is going on up here I believe. Actually no he hasn't scouted it just yet so that's p important to know. Uh, the timing of when Salve actually scouts this roach worm. As you can see there's nothing to delay um, uh, Sal from scouting that. The, the Zerglings only just come out here now uh, when it comes to this build. The, the timings on this build for Zerg are really important so they can't actually afford to get those Zerglings out before the roaches, the roach warren goes down. So about at half that was down we do see that Salve has thrown down that forge and is preparing for any kind of hijinks that the Zerg is going to throw at him. So again let's look over these two points. <laughs> um, the first point is have your scouting done effectively. You really need to keep on top of that and you really need to see when this is coming uh, otherwise you're going to be in a bad spot. And you also need to notice that there are no expansions going down because that would imply a completely different strategy. So two cannons are going down here now uh, on this pylon and he's going to throw down a third cannon here. I'm uh, not 100% on this cannon placement here. The reason being roaches do with their 4 range can actually shoot that with overlord support um, which is just up there. Um, so personally I would have liked to have placed this in one step back but maybe maybe they know something I don't. These guys are higher rank than me. I've been away a long time but I certainly wanted to look into this myself in order to be able to familiarize myself with it and make sure that I don't die to some stupid ass bollocks. So those roaches are coming along now and they're going to start firing away at that cannon, but that cannon is going to do a considerable amount of damage to that, nicely pulling away that first roach there. And more cannon fire going down on them and almost going to kill that second roach, but the cannon does go down just in time. And uh, now throwing down a robotics facility salve here, um, but as you can see he hasn't gone for that warp gate, he's just corona boosting out as much as possible here, got nice energy on these sentries. So he did go Zealot Sentry and then just reacted with the buildings required. So what most Zerg, from what I'm told, will do in this position, if they see that you do have cannons, they will instantly go for a Baneling Nest after this. And again, this is pretty much an all-in. Your economy right now, as you can see, look at the nice saturation there in comparison to this terrible saturation. And that is the key factor. If you can survive through this kind of tactic from a Zerg player, then you can pretty much clinch the victory without a shadow of a doubt. There are a lot of Zerglings coming in, granted, but if you can just keep 
producing the units here, pushing these roaches back, uh, then you'll be in good stead to actually take this. So this gateway is almost on the way out. There's an overlord coming in here. I'm not sure where that overlord was going. Uh, probably a misrallied point. Um, but we do have an observer coming out. Uh, Salve feels pretty confident in his ability to defend this right now. And uh, we do have a lot of banelings coming in from that banelings nest. Uh, morphing them in from zerglings. But as you can see, trapping a lot of those units there. And now it's just a case of wailing away at those. I, I really like this kind of trapping the units in idea. Um, and most players would just suffice with like blocking them at the bottom of the ramp or anything like that, but trapping them in is fantastic. And uh, I actually also don't like that much the placement of this second pylon that it was done because when the uh, when the cannon was there um, but got destroyed, if this pylon, if that pylon there had been destroyed then this pylon wouldn't have been powering the cannon that was there, if you know what I mean. That's a minor point, but ultimately a point that, you know, could end up losing you a game for whatever reason. So anyway, to quickly cover this again, as I say, you really need the scouting. You need to know that this Roach Warrant is down. You really need to know that there is no expansion going down or anything like that, because that will signify that he's going for pretty much an all-in. Even do a drone count if you can pretty quickly, because after after the um, Roach Warrant and spawning pools have gone down, etc., etc., there's not going to be much drone production at all. There's just going to be nothing. So... Once you see this uh, going down with the Roach Warren, if you see it at about halfway done or whatever, you should be in good stead uh, at that point to throw down your forge and get some cannons up. Um, even if it's almost done, go for it anyway because they've still got quite a travel distance and you should be okay uh, setting up this defense. One Zealot, two sentries, um, and then a Stalker or whatever you want to do with this. And then they shouldn't be able to get in as long as your Force Fields placement is really good. Um, and again, do bear in mind that if they do see this at the top of the ramp, they are going to throw down a Baneling Nest probably and try and bust it. So you really need good Force Field placements at that point in time. So, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, guys. I hope you found this educational. Uh, I certainly did after uh, today of uh, kind of researching it. And um, I think... Uh, in the ne next coming days, if not tomorrow, um, I will be doing a video outline, uh, having a look at the new maps that are on the PTR currently, and uh, but the potential implications on Protoss in general uh, for those maps. Uh, I might do it in all in one big video since I can upload more than 15 minutes. Haha. <laughs> um, so this is why I'm not really wrapping it up that quickly. Sorry. If you've if you've done with the tactic stuff, just go because I'm just rambling now. Um, but I might also split the videos up into smaller set sections um but i'm not sure i'll i'll decide on the fly so yeah thanks very much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this vid uh if you liked what you see please subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys next time